Hi, good morning. Um, shuttle buses appears to be the uh, <coughs> guaranteed applause line. Um, thank you guys for coming out this morning. Uh, this is my second straight morning uh, now in a room full of librarians, and I have to say, I love it. Um, so as an editor, um, you're always looking for authenticity on the page. You're looking for great writing and compelling stories, of course, but without an authentic voice powering the whole enterprise, you're lost. Kelly Corrigan is, a, is as authentic as they come, as honest as they come, as funny as they come, as relatable, self-questioning, and open as they come. Many of you know her as the best-selling author of the memoirs The Middle Place and Glitter and Glue. Her new book, Tell Me More, is a deeply personal exploration of the 12 phrases that turn the wheel of family life that are essential to adulthood. Phrases like, I don't know, I was wrong, onward, no, I love you, and of course, tell me more. Kelly's new book is like a conversation with your smartest friend and a powerful argument for the power of the right words at the right moment to change everything, between us and within us. I'm so happy to introduce, introduce you to Kelly Corrigan. We usually joke around a lot, me and Andy Ward, so it's kind of amazing to hear you say all those nice things about me. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Hi. Uh, it's so nice to be with you, and I totally returned all my library books, no matter what they say. Um, so I'm really curious, and have been for the last couple years, about this sort of predictable clash between the grand and existential which is often pushed out of focus by the trivial and maddening realities of daily life. And I'm more interested in it than ever because uh, since last I had a book out, I've been to two funerals. Uh, one was kind of fabulous, which was my father's, who lived a long, great life. And the other was kind of devastating, which was my friend Liz's. And I don't know if you have lost a friend yet, but I'm sure if you have, you remember the first time that that kind of cuts into your reality, and I feel that it's really a before and after moment. And she was sick for a long time, and we had a lot of long, hard conversations during those seven years. And I continued to be stunned by how, you know, at 9.30 in the morning, I could be on the phone with a 46-year-old mother of three who knew she was losing her life day by day, and I could be totally with her on those issues and feeling so lucky for my health and then by like 10.02, I could be livid over the fact that I'd gained 13 pounds and couldn't wear my skirt anymore. And so that, to me, gave me this urgency to be better at my life, and I went looking for something to hold on to. And I happen to know this truly wise man um, who worked at my husband's office, and we got talking, and he said this little phrase, it's like this. And it totally connected for me. It was kind of the right three words at the right moment. And he said, this is what it's like. This is what living is like. You know, it's, it's high and it's low and it's um, messy and then it's clean and then it's, you're very clear headed and then you're a mess. Um, and I held on to that and I took it home and I said to my husband, who also loves this very wise man named Will, uh, God, Will said this thing today and it was so <coughs> cool and I think it's, I'm really going to kind of clutch it to my chest for the rest of my life. And that got us going about, like, what are the phrases? If there were five, the five most important sentences in all of human relationships, what would they be? And that conversation led us to 12. And there's probably 25. But Andy said I could only do 12. Um, but sequel. Um, <laughs> so, um, some of the phrases, as Andy said, you know, like it was such a fun conversation to have, and I encourage you to have it amongst yourselves and to think it through. There's also really funny phrases that didn't get included, you know, like it's five o'clock somewhere. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it led us to, so there's all the kind of the first things that you would grab, like saying I'm sorry, which on closer inspection became I was wrong because I totally believe that that's a statement of a different order altogether. And uh, as my husband has discovered, um, 
people saying I'm sorry is sort of casual and overused, but people saying I was wrong is extraordinary and strikes the ear in a totally different way. And uh, in our house, it can get you late. <laughs> So, but, but another one that I really, I didn't see coming, but then we started talking about it was I don't know, because it has so many incredible applications and it, and it came into striking relief during the, all this political campaigning that we've just suffered through, um, where conviction is, you know, like the, the spirit du jour, where you have to seem so sure of everything, and it's such a shame because hardly anything is like that, and so I took a long look at what uncertainty is and what it feels like when it's about your body or your career or your finances or your marriage uh, or your children and what their true motivations are and who they are and who they might be becoming and um, and that was a super satisfying look for me and so each chapter is a little collection of stories and some are funny like in um, well and I was wrong I had to cop to uh, just behaving horribly in front of my children and going nuclear over something that is known in our household as the poop fight of 2012. Um, and I'll just leave that out for you to, to just work through. Um, I really couldn't believe when Andy didn't cut it. Uh, um, and so some of it's funny, but a lot of it is, the underpinning of it for me is, is Liz and uh, this friendship of mine. Uh, so I wanted to just end on the last little section of the first chapter because it's like this is probably the most obscure of the sentences and so I thought I'd spread it out for you. Uh, this is after a long hard morning of uh, death by a thousand cuts. I'm done peeing. I flush and tie Greenie, that's my dad, Greenie's giant pajama bottoms back around my waist. I spit a mouthful of toothpaste into the sink, rinse and bare my teeth for inspection. I relax my face. I exhale. I console my reflection. It's like this, Kelly. Hidden in the morning's frustrations, like a rattlesnake in the woodpile, is something else. I close my eyes so I can listen for the other thing, the further away, much worse thing, in the quiet of my own head. Life ends. I have known this since the summer of 1972, when an ambulance drove away in silence with the old lady next door who gave out almond joys on Halloween. But now I've seen mortality do its awful ghosting up close, twice. And that has changed the context of everything. In the new Zodiac, without Greenie, without my friend Liz, all terms have been recalibrated. Pain is agony. Bad is fatal. The scale, too, is reset, making it hard for me to reconcile what I've seen with how I live. <coughs> Liz would have done another week of aggressive bromodomain inhibitors at Cedars sinai for one more morning of hairballs, eggshells, and toenails. To see her kids become teenagers screaming obscenities in, at each other in the hall, she'd have given up every organ in her pelvic cavity. And then there's Greenie, who would have told you that life was a carnival. The music, the snack stalls, the fortune tellers and strong men, it's magical, lovey. I swear that's how he moved around in the world. This isn't just a kid making a hero out of her dad. Edward called Greenie a happiness genius, but you can ask anyone. He was as excited about being alive as anyone you will ever meet. And me? I walked next to him in that festival light for almost 50 years, and then one night in February, he let go of my hand and slipped away, and here I am, two years later, same as ever, except quicker to anger and 13 pounds heavier. <laughs> Shouldn't loss change a person for good, forever? Maybe Will's curious phrase, it's like this, applies here too. This forgetting, this sliding into smallness, this irritability and shame, this disorienting grief, it's like this. Minds don't rest, they reel and wander and fixate and roll back and reconsider because it's like this, having a mind. Hearts don't idle, they swell and constrict and break and forgive and behold because it's like this, having a heart. Lives don't last. They thrill and confound and circle and overflow and disappear because it's like this, having a